Okay, 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 okay. It's 1.30 Friday morning, day six, made it to day six. Ryan's left Bellingham, he's got 15 miles to burn us. He's then he's going to have to reorganise and then he's got 27 miles to uh, the finish line through the Cheviot mountain range. There's some uh, waist deep snow there, there's been a bit of a diversion. So now by my reckoning, he's got 32 and a half hours to cover something like 40 miles. That's pretty, pretty on there. He's got to move at 1.5 miles per hour, which is well within his grasp because he's moved, been moving faster than that. But it is tight still. Now, the last few hours was the toughest hours for me and Ryan. The fast turnaround in Bellingham could not happen. He was wasted. He was a zombie. Didn't know what he was doing. And it was dangerous. But the amount of sleep he needed or wanted, he couldn't have either. He wanted more like five hours. We was going to do 90 minutes and have him out within three hours. We compromised and we had three. I kept him warm. I sat in, a, sat in the driver's seat again, now and again a bit of heat, and he was out. He slept well, good quality. The checkpoints are shocking to sleep in, shocking. In and out, people, bright lights on. It's, you know what I mean? You might as well just get in a ditch, in my opinion. So I've got him in the car. That's another perk that he's had. He might only have had three hours, but them guys might lay there five hours and get two hours. So they're in and out. It's not, it's not, bam, sufficient. It's given the best chance possible. And he's, he's, he's risen to it every time. His demeanour has been impeccable. He's map reading immaculate. Other than today when he's getting tired, he has not got the time now to make a big blunder in the mountain range he's got to stay on that map i've told him double check then move strong double check but thumb that map stay on that map all the time it's about the nav because if you've only got to do 1.5 miles per hour which sounds easy but it's a little faster that he's got to do in reality because then 32 and a half hours are actually probably 28 hours of movement he's going to need a bit of a reassess maybe even another little uh, sleep very briefly, as a power nap in Burness, there's two mountain huts along that range as well that he might need. He might get lost slightly, have to get back on track. The snow might be deeper than expected. There's all these things. He might start feeling poorly. He might twist his ankle. You need the cushion. There's no way we are seven months, six days into this. One more day and everything over this period comes together and he finishes there's no way possible, there's no way imaginable that I was going to risk Ryan getting timed out by letting him rest too long. Now, a lot of people in that room disagreed with me and I could feel it. The medics kind of watching a bit concerned. The other runners telling me that their cut-offs are generous and they've got plenty of time. You know why? Because they're about to go to sleep. Who are they telling, me or them? It's too tight. It's too tight. You don't have a dream in front of you and then rest too long. You take what you need and then you go after it. He's got to claim it. This is his. He knows he's in control of this. 100% on to do. And that's how hard. Seven months, six days has put him in a position to claim it this last day. That's how tight it was always going to be. But imagine if he wasn't in that position. Uh, the, the group that he was in at Halls, none of them are here now. All of them are dropped. All of them are out. I had to get him out of that group. And he did. And he responded. He's been phenomenal the last few days. Absolutely incredible. He, he, he's just, his whole attitude is amazing. He's, he's, um, he's, he's got the mindset of a champion, using them three words over and over again. You know what they are? Deal with it. Things happen and he's dealing with it. I absolutely love his whole approach. I might have given him a bit of guidance and I've done everything I can for him. But I driving here towards Burness, it must have been Ryan because I, looked, I checked the map and, and of when he set off, you can just see this solo head torch in pitch black. Trust me when I say it, 
This is 90% Ryan. He just needed a little bit of help. This is 90% Ryan. Anyone who wants to, to, to moan about, oh, he had an unfair advantage. No, he didn't. He took it upon himself to pull me in and, and get advice because that's how bothered he is. To some people, this might be a bit of fun. This is changing Ryan's life. I've seen him change in the last few days. He's changing me. Like, the relationship that's formed, I can't emphasise enough how much impact each of us are having on each other and don't forget we're only seeing each other now and then for a few hours the energy has had to be held high the, the vibes have had to keep flowing he will do this and he'll do it because of ryan wood when he's out in them fields and them mountains i'm not there i'm not there talking to him he doesn't need me there it's the same when I ran the last 50 miles with Marie Sly on the North Downs Way. Not once did I have to encourage Marie. I just had to be there with her to make sure she got that, that North Downs Way 100 done. But again, impeccable demeanour. So I'm privileged in my role that I've got these people around me because they're great. And Ryan just needs to keep keep on that route Keep it together and pull it in. He's got to go claim it. The smiling mile muncher has got to keep munching. Munch, munch, munch.